thyroid problem is one of the very common hormonal problem and the moment any person is diagnosed with a thyroid problem they get scared they feel that they have got a thyroid cancer now how do we find out and how do we confirm that you have thyroid cancer if you don't know about it then stay tuned with me because we are going to discuss that in today's topic namaste my name is dr tanvi mayur patel i am an endocrinologist hormone specialist doctor from mumbai india now before we continue this video one important information if you want to watch this video in hindi language then on the i button and below in the description box there is a link if you click on that link then this video will be played in hindi language for you agar aap is video ko hindi bhasha mein dekhna chahte hain to upar i button pe aur niche description box mein ek link hai अगर आप उस लिंक पे क्लिक करते हैं तो इस वीडियो को आप हिंदी भाषा में पाएंगे सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू आवर टूडेज टॉपिक दैट हाउ डू वी डिसाइड एंड कंफर्म दैट अ पर्सन हैज अ थायरॉयड कैंसर और नॉट इन दैट द वेरी फर्स्ट इज गोइंग टू बी योर जनरल बॉडी हिस्ट्री विच यू आर गोइंग टू शेयर विथ योर डॉक्टर सो इन द हिस्ट्री योर डॉक्टर इज गोइंग टू आस्क यू अबाउट द वेरियस बॉडी सिम्टम्स और बॉडी कंप्लेन्स और इश्यूज विच यू आर फेसिंग एंड आफ्टर लिसनिंग टू योर हिस्ट्री योर डॉक्टर विल ऑल्सो आस्क यू फ्यू क्वेश्चन विद व यू एवर एक्सपोज टू एनी काइंड ऑफ रेडिएशन इज योर फैमिली इज हैविंग एनी काइंड ऑफ अ थायरॉयड कैंसर many a times a cancer like a medullary thyroid carcinoma can run in the family so that history can also be obtained after understanding your entire case history your doctor will do a physical examination now when we do the physical examination we are going to mainly focus on your thyroid gland we want to see whether your thyroid has any kind of a nodule or a lump kind of a swelling or not understand that if the lump is a one in number this could be a dangerous at the same time if your age is also very young or you are very old person again your risk of having a thyroid cancer increases so based on your individual risk profile your doctor will investigate further now the moment we say the investigations what all investigations we do it all depends on individual to individual but on broader aspects what all investigations we ask the first one is your blood test of your hormones see thyroid is an important endocrine gland and it secretes hormones like a t3 and a t4 so when we do a hormone blood test we want to find out what is the level of a t3 hormone what is the level of a t4 hormone we also want to know what is the level of your tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone when you have a thyroid cancer the tsh levels are usually on a lower side so this is a first hormone profile we want to do second hormone profile we want to do is of a calcitonin see calcitonin is another hormone which is produced by the thyroid gland your thyroid gland has a specialized c cells and this c cells secrete this calcitonin hormone This calcitonin hormone is a very important in maintaining the right balance of the calcium in your blood. So we check your calcitonin hormone also. Usually the calcitonin hormone gets disturbed when you have a cancer cells of a C cells and these are mostly a medullary thyroid a medullary thyroid carcinoma. so mtc cell uh, carcinomas will have a higher level of the calcitonin but usually one problem happens with the calcitonin hormone is that many times a false positive and a false negative results can also happen and which can be misleading so this is a second blood test we do third we do is the antibody markers so what are the antibody markers we do in that the first one is a anti tpo antibodies that is anti thyroid peroxidase 
second we do is a anti thyroglobulin antibodies and third we do is a trab that is tsh receptor antibodies so these are the antibody levels we do and these antibodies if they are positive they mainly indicate that your thyroid problem has a autoimmune origin right another test we do and they are basically a cancer markers in that the very first one is CEA that is carcino embryonic antigen usually CEA levels are higher when you have a medullary thyroid carcinoma so in a cancer markers there are two cancer markers we usually do one is a CEA and second is a serum calcitonin which we already discussed so these are the certain blood tests we do to find out whether you have a thyroid cancer or not. One another protein testing we do that is a thyroglobulin. See thyroglobulin is actually a protein which is secreted by the thyroid gland. Usually thyroglobulin levels are done not to find out about the thyroid cancer but it is more helpful once a patient has recovered from the thyroid cancer. See what happens when you have undergone a recovery, uh, when you have undergone a treatment for the thyroid cancer by various methods either by surgery or a radiation or whatever means as per your individual case. In the follow up visits we do a thyroglobulin level testing. If the thyroglobulin levels are rising or increasing, it indicates that your thyroid cancer is either in the recurrent state or a metastatic state and which has relapsed. And if your thyroglobulin levels are on a lower side, that means you are in a safe zone after the treatment. So this is another blood test we do. Then we do certain kind of a scan. Now these scans are again mainly for your thyroid gland in that the first we do is an ultrasound or a sonography scan. When we do the sonography scan we actually want to see the lump or the nodule what you have. What is the size of the nodule? What is the composition of the nodule? Whether that nodule inside has a fluid or it is a solid. It is found that the nodules which are solid, they have a higher chances of having a cancer. We also want to know what is the margin or the border of the nodule. It is found that if a nodule has irregular boundaries, again it indicates the cancer. We also want to know what is the calcium level inside the nodule. And this we call it as a calcification. So if your nodules has the calcification, again it indicates that it can be a thyroid cancer. Along with the scan of your thyroid gland, we also want to see the co-associated other areas, especially that of the lymph node. Whether What is the status of the lymph node? Are your lymph nodes enlarged or smaller in size? That also we can find out. After doing the sonography again it depends individual to individual we also ask you to do a specialized kind of a scans and they are called as a radioactive iodine scans and in this radioactive iodine scan we mainly use a radioactive dyes and these dyes which we mainly use are called as a 99m per technetate scan or we also call it as a thyroid scan by the way, what is thyroid scan? I have made a detailed video on that. If you want, you can watch that video to find out about that scan. So we do this kind of a scans also. Many times what happens that the in this kind of a scan, we use a dye and that dye contains the iodine. And many times this iodinated dye can give a misinterpretation of the report. So in that kind of a situation, we do another kind of a scan, what we call it is a PET, that is a PET scan. It is nothing but a positron emission tomography scan. So PET scan can also indicate about the status of the thyroid cancer. Besides that, we also do a scans like a CT scan and MRI scan. 
So CT scan and MRI scan can be done of your neck area and sometimes we also do it for the chest area to find out that whether if the thyroid cancer is present or not and if present does it has spread it across to a chest area or not. And for that many times we also do a chest x-ray to find out the spread of the cancer in your chest area. Now, the moment we see a single nodule, we also ask a patient to undergo one more testing that we call it as a FNAC that is fine needle aspiration cytology. In this test, we take a help of a syringe and a needle and this is inserted inside your nodule. And from this nodule, we extract some fluid and this fluid then undergoes into microscopic examination. And in this examination, we find out whether do you have any cancerous cells or not. And if yes, we take the treatment accordingly. So this is also another kind of a testing we do. Now many a times, many people who have a thyroid cancer, they can also have a disturbance in their voice. And that happens because of the enlargement of the nodule which is compressing the vocal cord area. And in that kind of a situation, we do a laryngoscopy. So to find out the status of your voice. Many of the time this laryngoscopy is also going to be helpful to us in deciding the kind of a treatment also. So these are the certain scans and the testing we do to find out about the thyroid cancer. If at all you have detected to have a thyroid cancer and when you are going to undergo a treatment, few more other testing again a case to case dependent can be done. We also ask you to do a complete blood count where we want to know what is the status of your hemoglobin and your WBC counts and all those parameters. Before undergoing a surgery, we also want to know what is the, uh, uh, your bleeding time and the prothrombin time and the clotting time whether do you have any bleeding disorders or not. We also want to check your serum calcium level. We also want to check your blood sugar level. And we also want to know what is the status of your heart. So before you undergo any kind of a treatment, all this testing along with the kidney testing and a liver testing can be advised. Understand, if you have diagnosed with the uh, thyroid cancer, please don't worry. There are treatment modalities available which are going to helpful. And if at all your doctor asks you to undergo a, any kind of a surgery, a thyroid surgery, then I have made a special videos on all of those topics wherein I have talked about what are the different types of the thyroid surgery, who should undergo those surgery, how the surgery is performed, what all care you need to take after getting discharged from the hospital, how to do a neck rehabilitation so that you recover fast. So, if you are diagnosed with this thyroid cancer and your doctor has asked you for this kind of a treatment, do watch that entire playlist. It will be really helpful to you. All right. I hope after watching this video, you got some good useful information. And if yes, please click on the like button. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you get more and more health related information. And if you have any of your personal question whose answer you are seeking for, write that in the comment box below. I try to read and answer them as early as I can. We will meet again with some new good useful information. Till then, take care of yourself. Namaste.